So Marcus Rashford is absolutely tearing it up this World Cup. We are going to be doing a tactical analysis on exactly why Rashford has returned to form and what he is doing that's making him one of the most dangerous players in world football. My name is Joe, this is Stretford Paddock and we are going to be diving into a tactical analysis of Marcus Rashford. What is going on with Marcus? We were saying that last season, we're saying it this season, but for two very different reasons. He has come back from what has undoubtedly been the worst form of his career last year and he is back on top this time round. Banging in goals for England, banging in goals for Man United. He's the top scorer for both teams this season. What exactly is Marcus Rashford doing differently? Well, let's get into it. First things first, we spoke to Maram a couple of weeks ago and she made the point so perfectly that we need to just quote her, basically. Here's what she had to say. I think United were a bit left-hand heavy under Solskjaer and the ball kept funneling through the left, which means that Rashford had his tendency to dribble and try to create chances from there, where I think his best trait is running off the ball and using his pace and athleticism to beat off defenders and manufacture chances for himself. Now, in that chat I had with Maram, she basically said... Rashford has been improving this season because he's having the ball less. He's doing more off the ball. He's doing less with the ball, which sounds counterintuitive, especially for a player like Rashford who can dribble, who can drive at defenders. He can do that sort of work. Somehow we're seeing more of him. Now he's receiving the ball less, even playing off the right-hand side for large periods for England. Let's get into some of these graphics here then to show you exactly what we mean and why Rashford having the ball less can mean he's actually a better, more productive player. You see this position here versus Iran. Now this, at this point here, Marcus Rashford has not had a touch in the World Cup yet. He has come on as a substitute merely minutes before this and these are set to be his first three actions. Now you can see him there out on the right hand side um, and you see Harry Kane in the middle on the ball there. This is the exact sort of position where Marcus Rashford absolutely thrives. Obviously Kane is a good passer of the ball, but Rashford receiving the ball, running in behind, running into space, he's literally one of the best in the world at it. And you see it as it unfolds here. The ball gets played out to him on that right-hand side. And the great thing with Rashford is he's not just someone that rushes. He's not just someone that snatches at that shot, you know, maybe takes a touch, um, maybe um, just sort of knocks it out of his feet and smashes it immediately. He's someone that sees the, sees the path sees what the defender is doing, cuts inside there, absolutely sells him the dummy, meaning that he opens up all of this space inside the box for himself to force a much better chance. That's something that um, Rennie Muhlenstein spoke about a couple of years ago on this channel. He did this with Cristiano Ronaldo and he was talking in reference to um, Marcus Rashford at the time, or I think Stephen sort of put that to him, that Cristiano Ronaldo in his youth would take very low percentage shots. He would do things where he does a nice skill 20 yards out and all of a sudden he thinks, well, I've done a skill, I've got to take a shot. The thing that really turned Ronaldo into that goal scoring machine was, was only waiting until he had good chances to take the shot. Marcus Rashford there is manufacturing a good chance for himself. If you go back to this, that screen before, you go from having a chance here where, yes, if he takes the touch uh, into this sort of area, you could still have a chance across the goalkeeper, you know, hitting the ball from there, you could do that. But if you, if you, if you bring it forward, you, you trust your ability, you cut inside, now all of a sudden you are having a shot from a much, much higher percentage area. Look at where he's taking that ball from. You can see the defender diving in in the centre there, but it's simply too late. Rashford has created that chance for himself and he's made a fantastic goal and that is a player playing with confidence, using his off-the-ball work, using that off-the-ball talent that we're talking about, and not just that, but using that mind and that mentality that he has, that confidence, to create a better chance for himself. There is first three touches in the World Cup, and he's already got a goal. Let's move on uh, to this next example then. Because, I mean, because he's top goal scorer at the World Cup, we've actually got a few good examples to go through here. Again, look at him here, centre of the pitch, off the ball running, um, into space again, as he always does. The best, like I said, the thing that he's best at, you, you leave space like that for Marcus Rashford, he's going to expose you time and time again. We've seen it so much this season already. Let's be honest, we've seen it dozens of times throughout his career. He did it against Arsenal this season. He did it against Tottenham multiple times. He's done it throughout his entire career. Playing off the last man, playing in those wide areas. I know he's come slightly more centrally there, but he's still in line pretty much with the fullback. He plays in that space. The ball gets played through. 
Unfortunately, he was closed down by the goalkeeper and the ball was blocked. But again, it's creating that dangerous opportunity, creating those chances where he's now one-on-one with the keeper, which you know maybe isn't his best, uh, strongest suit. But the fact that you are getting one-on-one with the keeper multiple times, like I said, again, mentioning that Tottenham game, it's a good example because he didn't even score in that game. And yet, what was it, 12 minutes in, 15 minutes in, he's one-on-one with the goalkeeper. He's forcing those uh, balls in behind with his off-the-ball movement, with that pace. With, and it's not just pace. I think people sometimes look at Rashford as this sort of athlete and you know, straight-line kind of Mustang of a player. But he's also very smart. His attacking awareness and his attacking positioning is excellent for a, a winger. You don't get you know, multiple 20-plus goal seasons as a winger without being uh, particularly impressive in terms of his, his mental side of things when it comes to his attacking positioning. He's just very good at that. So you can see there, no goal, but again, causing that threat off the ball. I mean, this one is... Don't really even go with what we're trying to say about his off-the-ball stuff. But you can't not show Marcus Rashford smacking a free kick in. The thing that that does is it shows his mentality. And I just want to get into a couple of quotes here from Marcus Rashford. Because Marcus Rashford taking free kicks like this, I mean, you know, you can blame the goalkeeper, you can do what you want. But he couldn't do this if he had the season and the confidence that he had last year. He says there, mainly injuries. I've been playing the last two or three years with a lot of problems. I've not been enjoying it as much as I should have for a long time. It's behind me now. It's something that happened in the past. So I'm just looking forward now. We're going to keep enjoying ourselves. He also spoke uh, a little bit more about taking a break over the summer, um, which is something that he's not really had much chance to do in the last few years. He's gone straight from injury to a new season. He then had the World Cup. Uh, we then had um, that year where Man United had to come back earlier than everyone else to play the Europa League final during COVID. We then had um, the, the uh, Euros in 2021. He's not had a proper pre-season, a proper summer off for a very long time. He says here as well, I think for me it was just about getting my own happiness right. When I'm on the pitch and enjoying myself, I play good football. It's more just within yourself. You have to be happy as a person. Referencing there is mental health. Referencing there how difficult it's been for him to have the form that he's had, to have the injuries that he's had. It's all the sort of thing that stack up. And I think sometimes people want to look for one answer. Sometimes people want to say, oh, he's been bad because he's trying too much on the ball. He's been bad because he's, he's not over his injuries. He's been bad because he's got mental health problems or mental health uh, sort of issues that he needs to deal with. When really, it's probably 20% one, 20% the other, 30% that, 40% stuff you don't even know about, 10% arguing with his girlfriend, 10% you know, he stubbed his toe on the way into training. Like, there's so many things that can go into why a player is having a bad season. And it's not just the goal scoring where you can see Marcus Rashford improving, where you can see him working for the team. There was times a couple of seasons ago where people started to question his attitude, times when I think the goalkeeper spilled the ball and Rashford was too busy complaining at Mason Greenwood to actually go and try and put the ball in the back of the net. We aren't seeing that from Marcus Rashford now. We're seeing a man who is working hard for the team every single week. You can see here, again, against Wales, this is off the ball stuff. So Marcus Rashford in the centre of the screen just there. He is pressing the ball and pressing that defender. In, in what is a fairly sort of innocuous situation, you can see England on a kind of you know man-to-man -man press there. Basically, each man has got their own man that they will cover when the ball gets played into that area. Rashford on his man there. We move it forward slightly. Rashford wins the ball back. Now, all of a sudden, we've got this brilliant position where you've got, essentially, four on four for England. Again, these, you see these sort of pairs here, four on four. All we need is to make some space. And you can see Phil Foden at the back there just biding his time. The ball goes down the right-hand side. Ball gets played across by Harry Kane into the back of the net by Phil Foden there, as we mentioned before. That is exactly the sort of thing that Marcus Rashford can be doing for not just England, but for Man United. We've seen Ten Hag loves to press. We've seen that. That is one way that he loves to create goals, is high pressing forwards, winning the ball back high up the pitch, creating chances for others. Yes, you can say that it was a great cross by Kane, and it was. It was a great finish by Foden and good running as well at the back post. But all of that, all of that comes back to Marcus Rashford right there winning the ball back and pressing up high up the pitch, doing the hard yards for his team. If we keep going forward again, there's just so, I love this. There's so many examples of him being good. When all season, last year, we were thinking, just give us one sign that you're still the same player. This is just from the World Cup so far. Um, again, off the ball running, this is the whole point. Off the ball work, He's, the, the pressing is off the ball, the running is off the ball, the chances created are all off the ball. Once again, running off the ball, in behind his defender, Rashford there, defender. If you are there as a defender and there is this space between you and Marcus Rashford, you are fucked. 
quite simply, you are not catching him back up. Unless it's Usain Bolt at fullback, you're not catching him up. A Safa Powell playing left back, that is you done. So all of a sudden there, Marcus Rashford is in about as dangerous position as you can get. No footballer on earth is, is more dangerous than Rashford there. You can look at people like Mbappe, who, yes, they're probably, he's probably as good as him, but Rashford, when he's goal side running in behind, he is genuinely an elite, world-class player. He gets down the right-hand side, again, using that same confidence, that same trust in his own ability, creating chances for himself, cutting back inside, again, onto his left foot this time, ball into the centre of the pitch, again, doing what we said before, making a higher percentage chance for himself. He could have just ran down the wing and tried to shoot across goal, but what does he do? He comes into the side of the box. Once you get within the, the confines of the, of the six-yard box, I know he's not quite there on this picture, but once you get within the confines of the six-yard box along the inside the penalty spot, the, the chance and the probability of a shot from that area going in massively, massively increases. And he's right on that line there. He knows what he's doing. He's trying to get himself in a higher percentage chance position. He does it again, ball in the back of the net, and that's three goals at the tournament for Marcus Rashford. Now, some people will say, oh, it's only the World Cup, it's international football, it's slower pace, it doesn't count. You don't get to truly see how good a player is based on what they do at an international tournament. And whilst these people, you know, that have, have sort of done excellently at World Cups and they're not shown that form um, elsewhere, that's not just what Marcus Rashford's doing here. Here is an almost sort of carbon copy chance that we saw against Tottenham, starting out on the right-hand side once again. This is in the Premier League uh, a few weeks ago. And again, that same game I've referenced where he doesn't even score, but this is how much pressure, how much danger, how much sort of, sort of terror that he puts in, in, into defences that he faces. This is a game he doesn't even score. Again, he goes down the right-hand side, Rashford. He's in the same position again that we keep mentioning where in the past maybe he would have tried to take a shot straight across goal. He would have tried to uh, sort of go further behind the, the, the defender and pull the ball across. But now we've seen a Marcus Rashford that is confident in his own ability, that is confident uh, in bringing himself into a higher percentage chance. Again, I keep saying it, down the left-hand left side, a little bit of a dummy to go wide. And then here's the crucial bit, back inside on that left foot. Um, and again, the only thing that stopped this going in was a fantastic save from Lloris. But once again, look, you can see it there, inside the confines, let me just do that again, inside the confines of that six yard box where the chances of the ball going in are so much higher. It's a great save uh, with the palm of the hand from Lloris in the middle there, which is what we didn't see from the Wales goalkeeper. But he's doing this on the Premier League level as well. It's not just oh, I'm playing against Wales, I can do it. He's doing this against one of the best defences in the Premier League and he's doing it consistently. Right, that's gonna be all from me. Marcus Rashford is back. We are finally seeing the man that we all know and love. He's Man United's top goal scorer this season so far. He's England's top goal scorer at the World Cup so far. He's making these chances for himself. He's playing smart. He's doing things the right way. And part of it, he's not on the ball as much. He's letting those off the ball runs that he's so good at do the talking for him. It's not a coincidence that Marcus Rashford is absolutely tearing it up this season. Let us know your thoughts on this video. Give me your thoughts on Marcus Rashford this season. Why has he returned to form? Is it because of the stuff we've mentioned or is the things we've missed? Let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, check out Dublin on the 30th of December, our first ever live show. I'll be there, Jay will be there, Adam McCullough, Stephen Howson, and Manchester United legend Brian McClare will all be there as well. The link to the tickets is in the description of this video. Check it out. Come see us on the 30th of December. Thank you very much for joining us, and I'll see you in a bit.